Jump 2-0 with a 342 ERA. This is his seventh start in 26 of the third. He's got a better than three to one strikeout to walk ratio and a first pitch strike to RJ Austin. Austin fouls one back, nothing at two. Never jumped to UCLA transfer started in Westwood, 16 of the third innings his freshman year. Had Tommy John has since come over here to LSU. Was great in the non conference. In fact, didn't give up an earned run. Got into conference, but a little bit different. Um, the stuff definitely plays. It's low 90s with two breaker balls. Lives up to his name. It's a funky action towards home plate. Short arm action, and he kind of leaps at home plate or jumps. <laughs> or the French would say, jete. Four earned on seven hits last time out against Arkansas. Two earned against Florida last week, and a swing and a miss, but a drop third strike, and the throw to first. Finishes Austin. One down for Camden Kozel. Did you ever wear a headband when you pitched? Uh, I never wore a headband when I didn't pitch. <laughs> no. Tommy White with his toes on the grass over at third base. For Kozels hitting 310 with a couple of home runs. Freshman from Omaha, Nebraska. High school mascot is the Patriot. 101. Y'all share a zip code? Uh no. Close. Six eight one something something. Fastball up and in at 94. And you can see the approach early from jump, and it's going to be the same thing on either side with Cunningham. That fastball, he will want to live at the top of the zone. Coase will a good job of laying off that one because you're not going to get it. And this one lifted high to right field. Josh Pearson is underneath it. Two down. Shift is on for Alan Espinall, and he sends a drive deep to center field. Mac Bingham all the way back into the shadows, and he hauls it in. Close the top half of the first inning. No Gage Jump needs 11 pitches to garner the first three outs. Fourth in the SEC and ERA at 2.87. The start of his year last weekend. Cunningham strikeout numbers were up. The control was outstanding. It's Mid 90s, and it will be consistently all night. First pitch strike at 96. Three straight fastballs and the third is in the center off the bat of Bingham handled by Calvin Hewitt. One out with the nation's active leading home run hitter coming to the plate. What do we have for Tommy now 60 6 0 6 0. Nine this season. Three home runs over his last six games. He led off game three against Arkansas. Led it off with a home run to right field. He can wear you out to right field, right center. And he sends this one high to right field, deep to the right center field wall and gone. 
Home run number 10 for Tommy White, and LSU leads 1 0. Tom, I don't remember a collegiate hitter that is as comfortable as Tommy White is in doing this, and that is using the entire field. The leadoff home, home run against Arkansas was to right field. This one out to right center. There is power to the pull side. There's power that way. Allows him to let that ball travel just a little bit longer, but can still get the barrel to it. Back spins it out of here, and the Tigers strike first. And then Jared Jones coming up may not be a fair comp, but Wyatt Langford jumps to mind. Recent history. Not the same type of raw power. Um, no, I, Langford probably hit more home runs to left, but yeah, he, he was definitely very comfortable taking the ball the other way. Until you get to the big leagues in a month and a half. Sharply hit to third, gobbled up by Diaz and dropped, and a recovery in time to get Jared Jones. I didn't mean to rain on your parade, just two batters in. It was more misty, it wasn't like a full rain. Like the Niagara Falls the mist. light mist. Yes. Bring your poncho. LSU 10 and 1 in this season with scoring in the opening frame. And here's Brady Neal. And a first pitch strike to Brady Neal. Roy, thanks. We welcome those of you who watch number 19, Arkansas, knock off 11th ranked Missouri in softball. This is game two of a three game series between Vandy and LSU. Tom Hart with Kyle Peterson. Vanderbilt came in red hot. LSU came in, loses a four straight, but the Tigers took last night 10 to 6 to start the series. And here in the first inning, Tommy White with a solo home run, his nation's best 61st in his career. And the Tigers with a 1 0 lead. Bryce Cunningham. On the mound for Vanderbilt facing Brady Neal. And Neal sends this one into the seats on the left side. For Cunningham now five home runs that he's given up this year and that is what he's susceptible to. He's going to try to use the fastball in the upper part of the zone. And that change up to left handers won't see it much to righties but that time to left hander first strikeout. For well, the game on the West Coast, it is in the building tonight. That was a loaded Jay Sarah team. And the first pitch misses low as Matthew Polk leads off the second inning. Jump got through the first one, two, three, and 11 pitches. Polk is from Long Beach, California. He played at Orange Lutheran. They're in the same class coming out of high school. Along with Thatcher Hurd, who also started at UCLA, he's with LSU, and David Horn, who we saw last night for Vandy, popped up in foul territory. Braswell, the shortstop behind Tommy White, and he calls him off. And Michael Braswell, the third, handles out number one. And that'll bring Davis Diaz to the plate. He was one for four last night, a couple of runs scored. Another California native. Jay Sarah, when Jump was there, had 13 players committed to Division One. <laughs> Jump was throwing 92 as a senior in high school. Another teammate, Eric Silver, in high school that signed with UCLA. David Horn was on that team. And this ball is popped up to left. Braswell back. Ashton Larson coming in, and Braswell's got another. Two down. The jump coming out of high school, he was one of the top left handers in the entire country. And you're number one in the state of California. That's pretty good. That would qualify. Yeah, number one arm coming out as a high school senior. 
got to UCLA. Thatcher Hurd was still on that staff as well, both now wearing the LSU purple and gold. Jaden Davis looks at a first pitch strike. I think it, it's going to be very interesting. We've already seen SEC teams raid the West Coast, really going back, going back the last five, six years or so from a middle infield position for pitching. And now with the dissolution of the Pac-12 yeah. and the challenges that programs like Stanford, UCLA, USC are going to face in recruiting because of travel situations. Travel situations, yeah, and I, I think particularly for SC, UCLA, Washington, and Oregon, going into the Big Ten is a, a really big change baseball. -wise. Big Ten's a lot better than it used to be, but uh -huh. we'll see a lot of uh, UCLA to Penn State baseball history. They start seeing it. Not for me. Four and one with a two eight seven ERA. Top five ERA in the league and third in the conference in strikeouts. He's K fifty seven in thirty seven and two thirds coming in. Ripped foul. Everything works off of that fastball and LSU is aware of that. I mean that's that's where you sit first and foremost. Against Cunningham it'll be sliders to right hander. He's got a really good changeup. Uh, and gets a bunch of swing and miss and chase on that changeup. He really doesn't throw it to righties, though. It's primarily only used against left handers. LSU you saw some velocity last night from Grayson Carter. It is certainly not uncommon. So that's a slider. That would be the slider. Senior Hayden Travinsky DHing in this one. Got his degree in sport administration. And 96 misses to take the count full three and two. In for strike three. Back to back K's for Cunningham. We've got Neil swinging to end the first. And you'll see Cunningham do that with the slider. 3 2, you're not necessarily throwing it for a swing and miss pitch. If, if you land it, a lot of times you're, you're going to get that reaction. Travinsky's going to be looking fastball. The slider stood him up right there. He'll add depth to it when he gets into a plus count. That time, just trying to steal a strike, and he got one as he climbs up the SEC strikeout leader list. Saw so Luke Holman last night. K10 over five and two thirds and notch the win. First pitch strike in at 96 to Josh Pearson. You mentioned this in the first inning, but the the idea that game one of this series meant so much to Jay Johnson and LSU relative not just to having Holman on the mound and trying to get one over on a team that's ranked above you, but given what their recent failures were. Yeah, I mean, you got Arkansas get swept. Southern beats them in a midweek game right here. Nobody gets their phone anymore in the clubhouse. <laughs> um. This one's launched deep right field, and it is caught at the fence. Matthew Polk moved back like two steps. Talk about playing deep. That was one off the bat, too, because we saw it from Pearson last night. I thought it was going to carry out of here. But Polk was playing deep in right field already, just far enough off the end of that bat. If he barrels that up, it's 2 0. Instead, deep fly ball, and you can see Polk go back, knows where that wall is, catches it about two steps in front of the right field fence. Not much of a breeze tonight. Just leaning on that pole like a drunk on a lamppost. Want to know to Michael Braswell the third. Braswell has been LSU's top hitter in conference play this season. Junior from Mableton, Georgia. With some Atlanta area talent on the field, including R.J. Austin over at first base for Vanderbilt. And Jared Jones, who's a three hole hitter for LSU. Here's the 2 1 to Braswell. And he yanks it into the seats foul. 
Oh my gosh, what a catch in the first row down there. Glove or no glove? Glove. Oh, that kid? Yeah. Oh boy, that's why you bring the glove. Swing and a miss at 96 up in the zone. Three strikeouts for Bryce Cotton's a game. Risp of a buck 86. All that got turned around in a big way last night. Didn't exactly get the easiest first half conference draw if you're the Tigers. Mm -hmm. Two Mississippi State lost two out of three. Gators came in at a rematch in the finals, lost two out of three. Then you go to Arkansas, the number one team in the country, gets swept. Now you get Vandy, you go to Tennessee next weekend. Rain Holcomb with a swing and a miss, one and two. Rare start for Holcomb, the freshman. He is just one for 19 at the plate this year. Seeing some action in left field tonight. He's in the seven hole. Hewitt to follow them. Vastine. Two and two. So what have we learned from this LSU team? First 10 games of conference play. Uh, that Dylan Cruz and Paul Skeens were really good. That you can never overestimate how important it is to have veterans. Dugas, Joe Bear, Trey Morgan. I mean, just the club that they had and the guys that have been around for a long time. We showed the graphic last night. You take their starting lineup, game three of the finals last year. There's only one guy on the field that's playing the same position as he did that. That's Tommy White at third. Pearson was in the game, started at left, now he's starting at right, but that's it. Fly ball to right field. Pearson to the track, to the fence, and it's off the top of the wall, scooped up by Bingham. It's a stand up double for Braden Holcomb, who has two hits on the season, one home run, and one double. And that's why Tim Corbin's got yeah. him in the starting lineup tonight. Yeah, that's why you play the hunch. You got the left hander in there. You got the big right handed freshman that's got a chance to run one out. And that time, Pearson just ran out of room. I missed getting out of here by about three feet. Lead off double for Holcomb right there. And Vandy's got their first base run. How about it for Vanderbilt? Well, that'll bring Calvin Hewitt to the plate. Vandy didn't have its first base runner until the fifth inning last night against Luke Holman. He retired the first 13 that he faced. Bunts placed perfectly. Only play is the first, and the sack for Hewitt advances Holcomb to third. One down, Jonathan Vastine coming up. Vastine had a big bat in the nine hole last night. Two for four, including a three run home run in the fifth. Fastball misses away, 1 0 to Vastine. To this point, through three weekends of league play, every conference series that Vandy has played in resulted in a sweep. They dominated Missouri last weekend, broke up big batch against Auburn. Start league play and got swept at South Carolina. One one pitch. Into shallow left. Larson was playing deep. Braswell had a long run and makes the catch. Two down. They had a bit of a shift on with Larson yeah. playing deep. That was a little bit more complicated than usual. Yeah, Braswell was on the second base side, so the right side of second base. Watch how far he's got to go. You're playing normal depth at shortstop. That's a pretty easy play at short, but he had to go about twice as far right there. So back to the top of the order for Vandy and RJ Austin. 
team that has been a terror on the base pass this season 59 swipes and 66 attempts and a first pitch strike to Austin was 0 for 5 last night. Mike Baxter the third base coach next to Braden Holcomb who led this inning off with a double. And this one's flown deep to left field Larson back to the track coming around at the fence and leaping attempt made but it goes over the wall and out. Two run home run by R.J. Austin. Third home run of the season for Austin. Mac Bingham gave it the old college try, but came up just a hair short. Yeah, Mac Bingham getting the start tonight instead of Paxton Kling, and they tried to sneak a fastball past Austin right there. Breaking ball that got him swinging through the first time. Watch Bingham go up, and that one just clears out. Kling's out there. He may have a chance to make that play. He's a little bit taller, a little bit more athletic. Instead, R.J. Austin rides one out, gives Vanderbilt their first lead of the weekend. And the inning continues for Camden Kozel, who's 0 for 1 of the fly out to right. First hit of the weekend for Austin, who had 300 in the Mizzou series and a line drive to left field. Larson catches up to it to end the inning. Long ball is in play tonight, despite. Ashton Larson swings at the first foul territory for Austin. And that one's going to end up on the roof. By the way, I'm not sure we appreciate R.J. Austin's defensive versatility yeah. as much as we should. Here's a guy who can play the outfield. Tim Corbin said man, last play year center. he could play anywhere. Yeah. yeah. We saw him on the infield some last year. I mean, really, he's playing first base just because it makes them a better overall defense and because he has a versatility to literally play anywhere. Maldonado was lost for the year with a shoulder injury. They needed somebody over there. Uh, started opening day as a freshman was the SEC tournament MVP in Hoover. He's rated the number two shortstop coming out of the state of Georgia while at Pace Academy in Atlanta. 2 0 pitch is waved at 2 and 1. Pardon me, it's 2 2 now. There it is. Oh, we're counting foul balls and strikes now? We are. We're going to do that tonight. Move it along. So we'll go see Kid Rock and Jason Aldean. Larson from the Kansas City area out of Overland Park. And he torches this one deep right field. That one's gone. And we are tied at two. Just the second home run of the year for Larson, and it comes down in the eight hole for LSU. That, uh, that's maybe a little bit juicy. Didn't think you're going to see right there. It's a short swing for the freshman. 103 miles an hour off the bat, went just over 400 feet out to right center field. All of our runs so far, two solo home runs for LSU, and a two run shot for Vanderbilt. The ball come via the home run, and the freshman Larson ties it up quick here in the third. And now here's Steven Milam, the nine hole hitter. Is the long ball just a byproduct of how Bryce Cunningham pitches yes. and his stuff? Yeah, I. Um, we were talking to Jay Johnson before the game just about offensive approach against Cunningham, and he referenced Alex Bregman. And Bregman talking about how he thinks hitting elevated fastballs, and essentially the way that he mentally looks at it. Is when you swing to swing like it's one baseball above where you think it is. Because the idea of the elevated fastball that stays on plane is it doesn't sink as much. So if you're going to try to get to it, you have to trick your brain into swinging a little bit higher than you otherwise would. To second, here's Jaden Davis. Pardon me, Austin. They lost it. Nobody has it. And it drops on the dirt, and Seema Milam reaches. To take us back to the top of the order. That'll go down as a base hit for Stephen Milam. 
there was nobody on the right side of that infield that saw. You can see I mean, maybe a late point right there from Jaden Davis, but RJ Austin never saw it until it was too late to go after. It's that time of the night to where it's just it's not pitch black. Lights are starting to to take effect, but if you're going to lose a ball, this is usually about the time it happens. So here's Mac Bingham, who's over one of the fly out to center. I thought as I was watching that Jaden Davis saw it. Thought that but Austin just was going to assume that Austin saw it as well. He'll he'll hear about that, and I would assume he won't do that again this year. Sophomore second baseman transferred in from Samford. One on one now to Bingham. And LSU's first base runner of the night after a couple of solo home runs. So going back to the approach, Aria Gerson, who does such a sensational job covering this Vandy team, points out via Twitter that Cunningham has a 48% fly ball rate, and 50% of the batters he faces either strike out, walk, or homer. Not and that is the definition of a modern pitcher. Two one now to Bingham. Slider in for a strike two and two. So what's the counter if you're Cunningham and you're facing somebody with an Alex Bregman type approach climb the ladder just a little bit more. I mean where, where you want to live with that elevated fastball when he uses it the way that Cunningham does. Is it the absolute top of the zone or a little bit higher. When that ball creeps down. That's that's when the trouble hits. But if you can stay there, if you can stay very top of the zone or just a little bit after, it's tough for guys to square it up. Every inch or two that it comes down, it, it makes it just a tick easier for hitters. Second full count from Cunningham. Here's the payoff to Bingham. Pulled foul. Oh, Josh Jordan. Was a great fielder at Catawba, North Carolina, and he's 0 for 2 on the weekend. After Bingham, it's Tommy White. And Bingham flies it to deep left. Holcomb is back all the way at the wall and comes around to make the catch. Retreating to first is Steven Milan. And so here's Tommy White. And here's what he did last time out. Yeah, watch location. I mean, that's the one that Tommy White just got you. Because it's about where he wants to throw that fastball. If you can get it a little bit higher, so be it. But that's a spot that Cunningham wants to live. It's also what Tommy White is expecting. And one of the best hitters in the country showed you why in the first inning. In the dirt. And Milan breaks for second as it gets 40 feet up the third baseline. Fifth wild pitch of the season charged to Cunningham. Tommy Wright's home run in the first inning was his 10th of the year. His 61st of his career. And he sends a line drive to the left field corner, and that's gone. Two home run night for Tommy White.
That thing left in a hurry. 107 off the bat at 21 degrees. Oh, top spin beauty out to left. So first time up takes an elevated fastball, drives out to right center field. Watch location here. Trying to go up. Instead, it leaks down and in. And this is what makes White so good. Like, you just think there's going to be room in. Not that they were necessarily trying to go there, but you think there's going to be room in because of his ability to hit the ball the other way. Then when one leaks in, he spins on it and drives it out of here in about a second and a half. Whew. That thing was scorched. Jared Jones. The folks at LSU Baseball Data having a hard time keeping up with these home runs. One on one. Tommy's first home run was 105 off the bat. 50th pitch of the game from Bryce Cunningham misses low two and one. LSU was second in the country in home runs last year behind Florida or vice versa? Um, they were definitely top two. They led the country in runs. I know that. Two balls and two strikes now to Jared Jones. They've been calling this place the powerhouse and finally living up to the billing. Three home runs tonight for LSU. Full count. Jared Jones grounded out to third his last time up they've got the shift on for him and the payoff is a fastball just off the edge at 95 in this third inning Cunningham allowed a leadoff home run to the freshman Larson Stephen Milam reached on a pop up in the infield that nobody could find Mac Bingham had a loud out to deep left and then Tommy Wright with a two run home run. Here's Brady Neal who's 0 for 1 with a strikeout I would also suspect and maybe I'm oversimplifying here. That since LSU is so geared up for the fastball, oh boy, this is a, a tweak on a pitch earlier this inning. And there's a change up in for a strike. But if LSU is sitting fastball so much because he's living in the upper 90s. To your point, attempting changeup, even if it's a meatball, is going to be a little bit more effective, right? I mean, your velocity difference, his velocity difference on his changeups, 10 to 14 miles an hour, so it's a big difference. The problem is, if it's non competitive to where it just starts down and out of the zone, everybody's going to give up on it, even yeah. if you're in a two strike count. That's what a lot of those changeups have been against the right handers. Popped up to center. And handled by Calvin Hewitt. We showed that pitch a moment ago from the Mac Bingham at bat. And maybe that was part of the discussion with Scott Brown. Like, hey, are you, everything okay? Are you all right? I mean, the velocity hasn't changed a bit. So, to your point, to that changeup this year, again, he'd only thrown 10 to right handers. The zone percentage, so the percentage of time it actually would end up in the strike zone was 20%. To lefties, it's 35%. He gets more swing and miss against left handers but if it's going to be successful and it's a good pitch you just got to bring it up three four inches. Hayden Travinsky swings at a fastball and sends a fly ball to center. It's a 30 pitch third inning for Bryce Cunningham. Moment last night starter for LSU 10 K's didn't walk a batter. How are you feeling today. Uh, I feel great. You know it helps a lot when your hitters on on point and it helps them put on the runs and you know take pressure off me so I feel good. Hey Luke, you've been so good this year, and obviously you guys go down to, to Arkansas, number one team in the country, and 
control was a little bit different there than I think it has been throughout the course of the year. But then you get right back on the horse, and last night was phenomenal. I, I think the line isn't really indicative of how good your stuff was. Yeah. What was different yesterday, at mindset or stuff-wise, than it was a week ago in, in Fayetteville? I'd say controlling the count. You know, I got ahead of hitters yeah. a lot better and wasn't from behind. And, you know, my slider was on yesterday. I think I was throwing it for strikes. And, you know, last week I couldn't really throw it that great. So. So give me mindset of the combination between a fastball that you would ideally like to throw uh, and then how the slider plays into that when you're approaching, I would say, most hitters. How do you combine those two? Um, I'd say, like, tunneling each other, protecting each other, you know, fastball in, off the slider in, and all that type of stuff. It's, you know, I like my fastballs there with the location because then my slider plays perfectly off of it. Alan Espinal leading off the fourth inning. Is, is that something that you learn – and correct over feel or film work. How do you how do you work with Netyevsky to kind of perfect that? I'd say you know you got to know your strengths and really boost them. And you know you get on some you know film and all that. You look over it and then you know really get in the pen and the lab and just you know reps and reps and reps. Shift is on and Stephen Milam with a nice play. Hey, look, there's not a lot of freshmen um, that pitch on the weekend essentially the entire year in this league. It just, you look around the league, you don't see it very often. You did it last year. Obviously, different uniform this year, but same league. What did you learn through that, and how do you think you're any different this year than last year? I'd say experience is big for, you know, young guys, you know, getting out there and just, you know, playing against other guys and just the crowd and all that type of stuff. You need to go through it, get used to it, acclimate to it, and it really helps. I always thought that there's a difference in being the Friday night guy at LSU, just like there's a difference between being, you know, the starting quarterback, for example, at Alabama, bunt handled and whoa, threw wide. That one's going to end up into the bullpen, and that's going to allow Matthew Polk. He took a wide turn at second, now he's back to the bag. Um, I'm just curious from a player perspective, does it bring, being within this program and being, being a Friday night guy under the lights and, 13,000 people here every night. Does it bring any more pressure? It, does it feel different than your previous stop? Um, I'd say a little bit. I mean, not much. I try to have the same mindset. You know, wherever I pitch, on the road, home, it doesn't really matter. But, you know, it, it feels good right now. So, Hey, Luke, I know, I mean, jumps left-handed, you're right-handed. The stuff's a little bit different. But how much do you guys interact based on what you saw last year or last night from a hitter standpoint? And how much does it carry over to the other guys over the course of the weekend? Uh, yeah, you know, watch me throw, you know, see what I do well against the hitters, see what they don't do well. And if, you know, if they can't change it from the night, you know, previous night, then just keep doing the same thing the whole weekend. So. This is uh, Jay Johnson out to have a word. Hey, give our viewers, if you if you could, some insight into, like, what this meeting is like right now with Jay out there, not just talking with Gage, but talking with everybody. Um, I'd say usually it's something about, you know, talking about, you know, folks on the batter right now. You know, we got the lead, I guess. You know, just do your job pitch by pitch. You know, he's big on, you know, pitch by pitch and not thinking about the whole batter as one. You know, it's interesting because Jay as a head coach probably comes to the mound and doesn't make moves more than most head coaches in the entire country. So if you see Jay running out or if you see Yeski coming out, who do you want to see more? Um, I'd say, you know, when Jay comes out, it's usually you're getting taken out or he's got something to tell you. And, you know, Nes Yeski comes out, it's more calming and all that type of stuff. So, so when Yeski comes out, you know you're good. Uh, like, you don't know what he's going to say, <laughs> but I know I'm at least going to hang in here for a little bit. Davis Diaz at the plate. Hey, before we get let you go, tell us a little bit about where you grew up. What was it like growing up in Berks County, Pennsylvania? Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's been so long, but, I mean, I guess, uh, you know, good amount to do and, you know, do the same thing here. I mean, it's not much different than what I do now. So, What did, what did you know about SEC baseball growing up in Pennsylvania? Um, I mean, I, I'd come down here, you know, a lot. You know, my dad had family down here, so I'd come down and, you know, look at places. And, you know, I always want to play balls down south, and, you know, here I am. So, It's worked out pretty well for everybody. Luke, thanks for your time, man. We appreciate it. Thanks, buddy. Uh, thank you. Enjoy thank the you. rest of your night. Awesome. Thank you. Is Luke Coleman, and now Davis Diaz at the plate after a single and a throwing error on the bump back to the mound to Gabe jump. I, I thought that was a great question. Like you see somebody coming out of the dugout, and to your point, Jay's not an automatic going to take you out no. of the game. 
No, and there's a lot of head coaches that are. Yeah. I mean, if your head coach comes out, then ultimately, you know, you're not going to be in there very long. Nate doesn't make the pitching changes. So, you know, if Nate's coming out, you may get yelled at, but at least you're going <laughs> to hang in there for a while. Line drive curls foul. And Nate's not a yeller. No, Nate's too chill to be a yeller. What did you want at any level? I never wanted anyone to talk to me. Like you'd rather them just not come out to the mound at I all. I remember my my college roommate was my catcher after AJ left. So the, after the first two years, and he didn't catch a whole lot the first. That'd be AJ two years, by the way. Yes. Um, this one's gonna get over to the LSU dugout, and they'll run out of space. No, Ooh, come back in. I think he thought they were gonna run out of space. Um, but it was my college roommate was John Schaefer and. Schaefer was catching my junior year. It was the first time he came out. Look at Nate. He was he was ready to make a form tackle right there if or he had to, a, if it was going to save somebody. Or take a charge. One of the two. When Schaefer came out, by the time he got out there, and I can't say exactly what it was, but it was a very direct one-sentence discussion <laughs> to tell him to return where he came from. <laughs> and that was it. There was nothing else to talk about. It's the eighth pitch of the bat to Davis Diaz. Yeah, that bat will continue. Surely, and I'm not trying to coerce you into admitting anything, but surely there were some visits that were helpful at some point. Oh, I'm not saying that people shouldn't be coming. They shouldn't but have I come out. You there. specifically. Oh, yeah. But I still didn't want to see it. <laughs> and that's why I would have been a lot better with the wristbands. Just text me. Let me look at it and we're good. <laughs> Strike three at 92. And the second strike out of the game for Gage Jump. I like that confidence going glove side fastball. It's exactly where Brady Neal wanted to go. You can see he moved to the inside. They're trying to stick that fastball in on the hands of Davis. And more times than not, when you surprise a guy in late, Tom Gladwin was so good at that from the left side to where it was away, away, and then he would surprise you late in. You get a reaction like that, you don't get a swing. Jaden Davis takes a first pitch strike. And he sends a line drive the opposite way. Polk will be pointed home from third. The relay from Jones never comes. And Vandy cuts into the lead on an RBI single from Jaden Davis. Mike Baxter over at third base. This is when you know your runner and you know your right field arm. And it, it was interesting the way that Pearson played that. Look out. And now the throw over to second. Wow. And they got him. No, no, no. They didn't? No, I think he's safe. That was Davis. He's paying attention to what the field's giving him right there. LSU is challenging the call of safe at first base. Second base, excuse me. You could see, watch, there's nobody at second base, and Davis saw this. I mean, that was all on his own, and now for Milam, he's got to take the throw, try to make the tag spun around all in one move. Safe on the field, so it's got to be something that clearly overrules that. That's taking a chance, but it's a pretty good time to take that chance. I had not been called. After review, the call second base is overturned, and the runner is out. Ellis was one of the runners. All right. Well, you may look back on that one. You may look back on that one of the play that Milam made second base. And a first pitch fastball greets Josh Pearson for a strike, nothing and one. Back and forth affair here tonight at the box. Only one run has scored without the benefit of a home run. That was after the on the Davis RBI single. Congratulations to Dawn Staley and her South Carolina team. They advanced to the title game on Sunday. Her team by uh, knocking off NC State. Her team over the last three seasons is now 108 and three. <laughs> 
Line drive headed to the pole. It is foul. 108 and three. That is some John is a, Wood uh, type stuff. 97 plus percentage winning percentage. Something that you're looking for in sports. Pearson flew out to right field his last time up. That is sharply hit foul. Pearson's just missed two home runs tonight. First fly ball tonight got to the warning track. Second one just hooked foul. His solo shot last night got the Tigers going offensively in the third. Got him looking. Is that the changeup? Yep. Yeah, and I, I like that pitch. He gets a ton of swing and miss on it. The course of season against left handers, and again, for the most part, that's when Cunningham has thrown that. Swing and miss percentage on the changeup is 54%. That's a loud number. That time didn't get the swing, but was able again to throw it enough up in the zone that he can get a called strike and, and a big strikeout right there to get Pearson. Here's Michael Braswell, the third. He's 0 for 1 of the strikeout. We were talking during last night's broadcast of Paul Maneri's approach to elite shortstops in this league. And well, he had one in Alex Bregman. Vandy obviously had one in Dansby Swanson. The same draft. 1 on 1 now. We're going to talk with Paul. He'll drop by the booth I like later it. on. There he is. Talk to him next inning. To third. Diaz on the run. Two down. Did you pre submit all your Maneri questions like I did? He, um, he asked for, for approval? Them. Yeah. He asked for them to be sent via email. I did, but I'm going to totally switch it up. <laughs> I'm not going to ask any of them. Miss seeing that guy, man. He's, he's a blast. One of the best. Hanging with his family tonight. We'll steal him for a half inning. Maybe two. Here's Ashton Larson. Four hundred and six foot home run for Larson his first time up. Ouch. One on one. Larson was the 20th round pick of the Twins in last summer's draft. Rated as the number 13 outfielder in the country coming out of high school. Goes down swinging, another changeup, and that is K number five. Brayden Holcomb leads off the fifth inning. Okay, jump on the mound for LSU. Tom Hart with Kyle Peterson. Very engaged crowd at LSU tonight. One and one now. Holcomb got the start and made Tim Corbin look really smart by sending a shot off the top of the right field fence his first time up. One and two. Corbs in the dugout instead of coaching third. Hold on a second. We just had a camera on him. He still does his same little stance. Yeah. It's the, the, the move towards home play. Yeah. Like a third baseman getting ready pre pitch. Swing and a miss for Holcomb. I'm still not used to looking down there when something happens. I. I <laughs> I'm looking over the third base coaching box. Here's Calvin Hewitt. Off the end of the bat, little dribbler, nope. nobody at first, and Calvin Hewitt ends up with a 50 foot single. 
And this is one over time Jones is going to realize it, the minute you vacate right there if you can't tag the runner the, there's there's no chance it's it's worth just hanging at first and seeing if there's any chance a jump can get there you, you're going to see Jones come into the screen and I mean if you're getting to the baseball when the runners already by you there's no way that Milam's got enough chance from time from second base to get over there it's if it's bun and hard go get it but on that one you got to stay home. Calvin Hewitt is fourth in the league with 15 stolen bases. He is 15 for 17. I don't think Vanderbilt has a stolen base attempt so far this weekend, and they came in second in the league in stolen bases. That's a big part of their game. Yeah. Swing, and that one got by Neal, and that would be an easy 90 for Calvin Hewitt. LSU only has one pass ball on the season and that pass ball came on a drop third strike and led to a run in a Florida comeback in game two. And Jay asked him to discuss it with the rest of his crew Matthew Wilbanks will. What could that have been. The only thing I could think of is whether or not he, he thought it was a. And so that brief meeting concludes. Swing and a miss and 92 up nothing in two. Last time popped up to short. Last time up he had a three run home run last night. His fifth of the year. I got hit. It may have gotten him in the wrist and he is in a lot of pain. First hit batter of the season for Gage jump. Bring Nate Yeski to the mound. And Corbs is going to check on him along with their head athletic trainer. Chris Matarazzo is the athletic trainer. Watch those hands start. Just enough right there. Must have just got the bottom of his hand. Yeah, it did. See when he took his batting glove off, his hand was shaking. <laughs> and that, that, that hit him square. Now you're just trying to get some kind of feeling back in there. So two aboard and RJ Austin come to the plate. Austin with a two run home run last time up. His third home run of the season. In for a strike, nothing in one. Austin also homered in the Auburn series, open league play. Runner on the move from second to third, and a swing and a miss by Austin. And it turns into a double steal. With Vastine following Hewitt. Yeah, we said it just a minute ago. I mean, this is what Vandy does as well as anybody in the league except Kentucky. That's that speed you up when they're on the base pass. Hewitt steals his 16th of the year right there. Vastine follows with his sixth, and now Vandy's got two in scoring position. 0 2 pitch. Chopped to short. Braswell's only plays at first. It's a run scoring ground out that brings Hewitt home. Third ribby of the night for Austin. That's a little hat tip right there to both Hewitt and Austin. Hewitt steals third base, infield stays back. Austin knows that I hit something on the ground in the middle of the field. We're going to tie this thing up, but it doesn't happen without the double steal. So here's Camden Kozel, the freshman DH. He's 0 for 2 tonight. A couple of long fly balls. Low and away, one and zero to Colgan.
Rashman was in the opening day lineup in the three hole. High fly ball to center. Park's going to hold him again. Three fly outs for Colson, but a run. Luckiest guy in the world. What a place to go to work every day, right? And uh, then you get in that dugout and you start looking around the stands and they're filled with 10, 12,000 people and you think, yeah, I got my job is to send these people home happy. Today. <laughs> That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> but uh, it's a great atmosphere here. And uh, I love it. I love being the coach here for 15 years. I cherished every day. Um, but it's been it's been different sitting in the stands watching it. Not as stressful, but uh, it's also it's taken an adjustment, as you might imagine. Until after you retired, when was the last time you just sat and watched a college game? Wow, I mean, big league games, I'm sure, and obviously recruiting. But well, sat and just watched a college game. Yeah, I went to Omaha. Uh, in 2014 to watch the finals between Virginia and Vanderbilt. Of okay. course, Brian O'Connor, yeah. who was my pitching coach at Notre Dame, was in the finals against Vanderbilt, and I went there for that series. Okay. Um, but I had a rooting interest, with all due respect to Tim and the <laughs> Vanderbilt and the I SEC. Think you, would understand that. you know, Brian is like a little brother to me, so, you know, we were we were hoping. But Tim won that year, and then the following year yeah. they had the, the uh, same matchup, and – and uh, Virginia ended up winning, so you know all's, all's equal there. But uh, you know it's different to sit in the stands for me. I I grew up in a dugout with my father being a great coach down in Miami, Florida, and of course I coached over 2,300 games in college. So it's it's just weird seeing the perspective of a game from not being in the dugout. You ever find yourself just giving signs out of nowhere when you're sitting there? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna run right here. We're gonna run. Somebody look at me right now. We're gonna put it on. Well, you know, I went and sat with Skip for a couple of innings uh, earlier today. I, I'm here with my family, uh, but I saw him over there sitting by himself, so I went over and sat with him for a couple of innings. And, listen, Skip is an analyst now. He's going he's yeah. to micromanage the entire game. And I'm like, come on, Skip, I just want to sit back and relax and watch <laughs> the game. <laughs> but, you know, Skip, Skip knows the game inside and out, and uh, every time I sit with him I learn something else. Um, but uh, it's just fun to be here at the ballpark. What are you guys talking about if you're not talking baseball with Skip? I don't know that I've ever had a conversation <laughs> with him that wasn't about baseball, <laughs> nor with most people. You know, I, I have a very limited view of the world, you know. <laughs> After the four-pitch walk to Stephen Mile and Mac Bingham at the plate, he's 0 for 2 with a couple of flyouts. You had a chance to catch up with Corbs before the game yesterday? I did, yes. You know, we competed against each other for 15 years. We also, my last couple of years at Notre Dame, we played Vanderbilt a couple of times, so I got to know Tim uh, then, and uh, as you might imagine, we had a lot of great games against each other through yeah. the years. Um, you know, I, Jay saw me visiting with Corbs before the game, and so when I saw Jay coming out of his office, I had gone down into the office. He said, hey, did Corbs tell you anything that you can help me with for the game tonight? <laughs> yeah, no surprise that Jay was looking for an edge. <laughs> Might as well ask. You never know. So I said to him, I said, hey, listen, you don't need my help. But Vanderbilt always beat us, especially in the regular season. We got we got him back a couple of times in the SEC tournament, you know, for the championship. But um, during the regular season, Vanderbilt had the, had our upper hand. I said, you, you've got him, so you don't need my help. He goes, well, next year, can you help me with a Van Horn? <laughs> <laughs> One and two to Bingham. You know, this came up in conversation earlier as Bingham goes down swinging. Um, of course, one of the best players in Vandy history was Stansby Swanson. You had a really good shorts up at the same time in Alex Bregman. Here's Tommy White now, his homer twice. The pressure that comes with being a star player at LSU just feels different whether that's shortstop or you know a Friday night starter even a guy like like Tommy White how through 15 years did you help those star players manage that well you know that's a, it's a good question Tom uh oh oh wow how about that huh how about that I'm gonna ask you to put your head coach hat on just just for a moment Guy hits two home runs and then he gets hit. Gets hit by a curveball. Oh, How is it a curveball? Yeah. How, do you, are you worried about diffusing the situation in yeah. your dugout and saying, "Hey, we're good. That was a curveball." Or, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, that's a curveball. Just got away from him. I, there was no intent there, of course. 
um, you know, it's fun for the fans to get into yeah, the game yeah. a little they bit. They don't though. care if it's a curveball. Yeah. That makes no difference to the fans. As difficult as it is, you're going to have this happen to you in professional baseball in the big leagues. Yeah. Now you'll know how to handle it because you've had to go through it here. He got out of the slump. He did, he did well the rest of the season. And he gets called up to the big leagues after a year in the minor leagues. Starts out his major league career 0 for 18. Gets a hit and then goes another 0 for 18. 1 for 36 to start his major league career. But he kept playing great defense. He kept hustling. The manager loved him, kept putting him in the lineup. And eventually, of course, he came out of it. And he's gone on to have a remarkable major league career. So, you know, the good stuff and the bad stuff is all part of the experience here. So the, the other thing that you can relate to is what Jay is now going through, which mm -hmm. is you go win the whole thing, and it, it's massively important anywhere, but this place is different when it comes yeah. to anything baseball-related. Then you go into the next season. Right. And I just wonder what that was like in 2010 for you and then any discussions that you've had with Jay about how, how to handle what – you know was going to come at you this year. I told Jay after you know after things kind of settled down a little bit after the championship last year, uh, I told him, let's watch this pitch. I told him, I said, Jay, I'm going to tell you that the year after we won the championship was my hardest year of coaching here. You know, people think we made it look easy. Well, everybody thought we made it look easy last year, the 2023 championship. But every year, the whole team has different dynamic on it. You're you're taking players that were role players the year before and now all of a sudden they're being yep. elevated into the the main job and uh you know the may, being the main guys that's a different kind of pressure for those players you know there's just so many different things and honestly you have the target on your back everybody wants to beat the defending national champion so you know wh whether you're the look at this jones punches it through the right side around third is milam headed to third is Tommy White and LSU claws back in front on a Jared Jones RBI single. They got your sign. <laughs> you, you sent the hit sign in right there. Jones <laughs> saw the sign from up here. Well, the, the old shift get, uh, giveth and it taketh away. You know, they're, they're playing him the other way. I mean, playing him to pull, and he went the other way with a beautiful swing and gets the RBI single. So ba back to that, the discussions that you have with Jay about year after. and Because yeah. that's, I mean, I think people don't realize that. How much more demand there is on your time oh, yes. after you win. I mean, everybody everybody wants to be around. They, everybody likes you anyway. <laughs> we, we've always liked you. But I admit, I liked you a little bit more after you won. It, so I'm sure the people here <laughs> Thank the you. same way. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and even before we won it, Kyle, there were an awful lot of requests for speaking engagements and those kinds of things because – you know, L baseball at LSU is so popular in the community. But after we won the championship, there was just an unbelievable onslaught of requests. And I don't like to say no to people. I like to help charitable situations and do things in the community and set an example for our team. And, I, boy, I, I, I was being run ragged doing those kinds of things. So that was one thing I gave Jay a heads up. I said, you know, you got to be really careful that you don't get pulled into – Neil chops it to the right side. Austin in fair territory, and they come home and get a tag there? on Tommy White at the plate. That was that was really close to being a foul ball, but not was, reviewable. In it was front a very of the field. similar to a play last night down yeah. the third baseline. Yeah. Last night it worked in our favor. This time it worked against us. But that's not a reviewable play. The only time you can re review a fair or foul ball is if it hits the ground for the first time past the base. That I, did you manage differently when you could see and feel the momentum being at home? W did you take more chances or were you more aggressive? Tom, my style of coaching offensively was to attack, attack, attack anyway. So, you know, I, I was a risk taker. You know, we liked, I loved the hit and run play and would love to try to, like, you know, Corbin stole bases the second and third yeah. that last inning. I used to, when you had the other team on their heels a little bit, that was when I always liked to, you know, put on a play and go after them. And so, you know, the crowd here gets into it. The other team gets a little flustered that maybe the coach even loses his focus a little bit, you know, instead of maybe pitching out on the first pitch, you know, which is the way to defend a hit and run play. You know, they're just going to try to throw a strike, and that's why I'd put on a hit-and-run play, and often it would work. Yeah. I don't know if you remember the game we beat Mississippi State to go to Omaha, 
uh, or the Super Regional in 2017. We had a great comeback in the eighth inning that we were down three to nothing, tied the game, and, and the place was going crazy. And on the very first pitch, we put on a hit and run play, and Bo Jordan hit a ball through the right side, and and our runner was down, and we won the ball game. So, yeah, I think sometimes the momentum of the game, because of the crowd being into it, but even when the crowd wasn't into it, if we were playing in an empty stadium, I'd still, yeah, put, yeah. like when the team is on their heels, I like to attack. 2-2 two, two to Travinsky, and each the down, we won the ball game. So, yeah, I think sometimes the momentum of the game, because of the crowd being into it, but even when the crowd wasn't into it, if we were playing in an empty stadium, I'd still, yeah, put, yeah. Put, like when the team is on their heels, I like to attack. 2-2 two, two to Travinsky, and he chops one to the left side, charging hard as Diaz, bare hand play, and he puts it in his pocket, and LSU is low to the bases on a little dribbler off the bat of Travinsky, <laughs> and that'll extend the inning for Josh Pearson. You know how the saying, Kyle, that you go to a baseball game, you might see something you've never seen before? I've never seen Hayden Travinsky get an infield single yeah. before. <laughs> it's going to look good in the book. We've seen a few of those swinging buns today. What do you um, do? You notice anything different, more now watching it from this vantage point? Oh, that's a really good question. You know, the thing is, okay, I there was just so many things I did different than Skip did. Not by design. It was because you know this is how I learned the game growing up and what I believed in. And I didn't work for Skip, so I didn't watch him coach every day. So Jay replaces me. Well, Jay didn't work with me. He didn't. He doesn't know my style and so forth. Every new coach has the right to do things their own way. So you know, people say, "Do you sit in the stands and second guess the coach?" I don't second guess him at all. He has the, the right to do it the way that he wants to do it. You know, and maybe he would have done something a little different than I did. Well, I did things a little different than Skip did. You know, he is. He. I think Jay's done a tremendous job. Last year, you know, everybody says, oh, he won with my players because I had recruited or coached many of those players. I say, no way. You know, he pushed the buttons. He's the one that made the decisions, and he deserves all the credit for that championship last year. And I think he's done a tremendous job here. And, and uh, you know, so when you say, do, do you see things different, there's going to be differences in the way the new, man, the new person manages the game. That's just natural, and it's okay with me. Sure. One and two now to Josh Pierce with the bases loaded, two down. When's the last time you had dinner in Baton Rouge and nobody recognized you? Uh, probably, I don't remember, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> it's really kind of flattering. The people here really care about their baseball. Yeah, they well, they care about their whole athletic right. program, you know that. And, and we have, you know, such a broad-based program and success in virtually every sport. And, uh, but baseball, you know, we've led the nation in attendance for however many years. And, you know, people notice you, you know. And listen, Kyle, when I was coaching at Little St. Thomas University or I was coaching at the Air Force Academy or coaching even at Notre Dame, you know, nobody knew who you were. They didn't care about your baseball team. I always wondered what it would be like to coach at a place where people actually cared about your team. I got my wish here. Yeah, here <laughs> they are. So you're not going to hear me complain yeah. about it, you know. Base is loaded for Pearson in a one run LSU lead. The pitch from Seaber swing and a miss. And the Tigers strand the base is loaded. What a pitch. But a couple of home runs and took a curveball in the back, which played a key role in that near LSU rally. They only end up with one run in the fifth inning after having five base runners. Here's Alan Espinal and the old one pitch is chopped off of his foot. What a what a great vision, awesome. huh? I, he's I could hang out with him for for as long as he'd be willing to hang out with me, man. He's he is as good as a get. O2 to Espinal. One of my favorite pulmonary stories occurred when he was at Notre Dame and he had a freshman pitcher who was a two sport player by the name of Jeff Samarja. And they got a new coach in and I'm trying to remember the new football coach who came in. I'll have to look it up. Charlie say. Wise? No, it was after Charlie Wise. No, before Charlie Wise. And uh, matter of fact, it was Charlie Wise. 
Line drive to left center field and a base hit for Espinal. Dynamite drop in. And Espinal is going to end up at second base. Well, Samarja didn't play his freshman season on the football team. And that summer, after the freshman season, Maneri and Weiss went to a Cubs game throughout the first pitch to the whole song and dance routine. And on the trip to Chicago, he said, you know, we should talk about how we're going to handle Samarja. He's a pretty good baseball player. And I think he could be really good for you if he actually got on the field because the other coach didn't really use him much. And Charlie Weiss said, yeah, you know, got a pretty good quarterback. This Brady Quinn guy, ground ball to short. And Braswell handles it. And talks Weiss into getting Samarja on the field, and he turns out to be like a second-team All-American. Yeah, football. really? Yeah. Oh, he was a superstar. Brady. No, 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 no. I, I know he was a superstar on the football field, but I didn't know that, that Paul was the one that told Charlie Weiss, hey, you got a pretty good receiver. You might want to check keep, that kid out. Keep an eye on him. Espinal ends up at third on the pull ground out, brings Davis Diaz up and Jay Johnson out to the mound. You want him to right here because he's trained to be a starter. To be fair, in that 10th inning appearance against Arkansas last week, he was undone by a one out fielding error by Michael Braswell. That extended the inning, then he lost it on a Hudson White walk off. In a 10 inning Arkansas win, part of a sweep. 1 0, the count to Davis Diaz, who is 0 for 2 tonight. Heard pitch Monday night against Southern. Got touched for three runs, but none of them earned over an inning. So errors behind him each of his last two outings. 2-0. Two oh. That was a pretty good one right there. Three and oh. And a four pitch walk and a fastball. And that brings Jaden Davis up. They've got action in the pen. With the lefty getting loose. The next lefty is Vastine in the nine hole. It's Nate Alkenhausen. They eat some innings if they want. And next to him, Will Helmers. One and zero oh behind the count to Jaden Davis, who is one for two. Davis hitting four sixty seven with runners in scoring position this year, low and away two and zero. Oh. Hurd's got six starts to his name. And in those starts, control not a huge issue. He walked one or less half of his outings, but he hasn't thrown a strike yet in this one. Uh, well, at least according to Matthew Wilpanks, the home paint umpire. You said that second pitch was really close. What a difference that could make for a guy like that to hurt in this scenario. Yeah, you spin a, a 1 0 count, make it 1 1 instead of 2 0. Could have looked a little bit different in this inning, but as it stands right now, six straight balls for Hurt since coming in. You're right. I mean, he, he really hasn't been undone by walks this year, but what has got him is hits allowed. Two fold visit, I would suppose, by Jay, whatever his issue. I, I honestly wasn't looking that way, so I don't know that he did, but I, I have to think that's what the, the question was there. First strike delivered by Hurd, two and one.
Davis lays off the baking ball breaking ball three and one. He's Jay's still complaining. Ground ball to Tommy White behind the bag at third long throw on the money but a run scores and we are tied once again bringing Alan Espinal home. It's a second time today that Manny's done a really good job. You get a runner on third base less than two outs the infields back and in both situations they've got ground balls deep enough that it's easy to score the runner from third early earlier it was the ground ball up the middle that R.J. Austin hit right here. Jaden Davis hits a one hopper to third base too high. No chance that Tommy White can come home. We got a pinch hitter for Vanderbilt here. JD, uh, pardon me, Troy Leneve. We'll take Holcomb out. Leneve will likely just stay in and left. Senior from Pittsburgh. Jay was still talking with Nate Yeski even after. That play and as Leneve was coming to the plate. Leneve 0 for 1 as a pinch hitter this season and a breaking ball gets all the way to the backstop. And a wide turn over at third from Diaz. Brady Neal's had a few of these tonight that have just kind of skipped underneath him and, and he did the same thing yesterday to where when he goes to block, he, he goes to block with one knee. And so as he rises up, there's a lot more room for that ball to go underneath his legs instead of dropping to two and just going all the way down, driving both hands into the dirt. When the balls have got by him, it's because of that. If you block that way, that's fine, but both your arms have to bury down in the dirt. If they don't, there's just more room. Ball and a strike now. It's ruled a wild pitch to allow Diaz to go to third. Jaden Davis with an RBI ground out to tie this game at five. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Sharply hit to second. Milan's got it. And that will close the sixth inning. Thatcher Heard kind of walked a tightrope there. Rebels trying to get back on track after getting swept by Kentucky last week. However, how about this? Kentucky 9-1 after the win against Alabama tonight. 9 and 1 for the second straight season. No SEC team has accomplished that feat in the last 32 years. Really? Thank you, Jeff That's, Muir. That is loud. In for a strike to Michael Braswell, the third. Powered that 9 and 1 start last year to a regional win at home. And then a trip here for the Supers. Braswell drives it deep right center field. It is off the base of the wall. He'll motor his way into second base and get there standing up. The leadoff double for the seven hole hitter. We had a few tonight that have hit midway up the ball, wall, right up top of the wall. Braswell, I think. Maybe thought this ball carried out. Calvin Hewitt played this as well as a center fielder can possibly play this. Helps to be left handed right there, but I mean, they actually had a chance. If that's gloved, because Braswell wasn't sliding, he thought he was going to get in easily. They had a chance to throw him out at second base on a ball that was a missile to right center off the wall. Here's Ashton Larson. He's already homered tonight. He is one for two. And he looks at a breaking ball for a strike. One on one. Sharply hit up the middle. Braswell is going back to the bag, so he'll only make it to third. And the Tigers with runners at first and third, and nobody out. Yeah, that's good, good right there. The freshmen's put two really good at bats together here. Solo home run in the third. Now, this time, 
It is a short swing. You're not going to beat him inside very often. Braswell has to go back on that. There's no way you can take a chance to get doubled up. His first move has to be back to second. Tiger's still in business, though, here. First and third. Nobody out here in the sixth. Steven Milam has reached base safely twice. A single and a walk. He scored both runs. Cyber with a pickoff attempt to first, pushing Larson back. Breaking ball in for a strike. Brennan Cybers stranded the bases loaded in the fifth. Ahead to count now, nothing in two. He's been one of three that Vandy has used in a closer's role. It rotate that role a little bit. Really seem like they're okay with it. Ryan Ginther, who we have not seen so far this weekend. Miller Green's the other. Between those three, they've got ten saves combined this year. Swing and a miss. Got him with a change up up in the zone. Second K for Cyber tonight. And there's one down back at the top of the order. That one's pretty good right there. Because even elevated, the velocity difference was enough. Milam all the way out in front of it. It's got a little down action to it, even up in the zone. But that's the best swing and miss pitch that the freshman has had this year. And here's Mac Bingham, who is 0 for 3. Chopped up the middle. Tough play for Davis on the run. In time. Little run scores on the RBI ground out, and LSU back in front. And here comes Tommy White. First base is open. Third baseman, Tommy White. Took a curveball in the back last time up. Would you pitch to him? Uh, I would not. I wouldn't throw him a strike. I don't think the freshman's going to get that opportunity. And so Tim Corbin will go to the bullpen. That'll take side of the bullpen. But it's it's a nod to McElvade swing and miss stuff. First pitch put on the ground a third and Diaz and White retired for out number three. So McElvain does his job, but LSU got the lead off. And he really wanted to swing at that one, one and oh. Sack bunt first time up. Infield single last time up. Fastball in on the elbow, 2 and 0. Oh. Thatcher heard now 0 for 4 in first pitch strikes. He's thrown 14 pitches since coming into the game. Ten of those have been balls. Jay Johnson, after putting him in the bullpen, continues to use him in high leverage situations, 2 and 1. And he wants Brady Neal to run through the sides again. Breaking ball out of the strike zone. Is it weird? Hurd's got the uh, pitch watch on. The Neal is using old school signs. Breaking ball in for a strike. Yeah, he may just. He may have been shaking. 
I don't. The one thing I've noticed since guys have the, the wristband and the pitch com, they don't shake very much. Right. Ground ball through the left side and a base hit for Calvin Hewitt. Went deep in the count. And they'll bring Jonathan Vastine up. I see if Vanderbilt takes the approach. I mean, that's a 3 2 breaking ball that Hewitt was, was on time for. Nothing about it fooled him. And since Hurd has come in. Nobody out. And Vastine pulls this one down the first baseline. Jones off the bag to get it. Hewitt is able to advance to second. Missouri knocked off Florida tonight, two to one in 11 innings. Columbia hasn't been all that kind to the Gators when they go that way. I think it's a little chilly for him. I would bet. Here's R.J. Austin. See, there was an earthquake in New York City today. Yeah, I saw that. You ever been in an earthquake? I have. Really? I was in an earthquake. I was doing a uh, baseball game in Reno, Nevada, okay. and I was staying in a very nice casino, floor to ceiling windows. Okay. And I had just crawled into bed, and I felt the entire hotel shaking. And I looked out the window, I saw birds flying out of the trees. And the first thing my say idiot it, self say did, it, say it, pick off the second. Uh, I ran to the window. Oh, because that's the safest spot. I ran to the window. I was yeah. on like the twentieth floor and looked out. And looked around and said, yeah, hey, this is an earthquake. And I'm standing next to a glass floor to ceiling window. And then it's over. Yeah. Not the smartest. Two one. And then I called the front desk. Yes, I'm smart. May I help you? Hey, did was that an earthquake? It sure was. Is the blackjack table still open? <laughs> cool. I'll see you in a minute. I'm gonna be awake for a while. I was on that trip with one Steve Turnberger. Uh oh. Fine director of American Sports Television. Two two pitch runner goes and throw the third is not in time. And we got batters interference, and RJ Austin will be called out. No, they got him on the check swing. Okay. I was going to say, because the runner's still third. I think Jay is going to ask for that. I think that's what he's walking out for right now. But on the check swing, they appealed down to first. I certainly don't see batters interference. I didn't see a swing either. But no, I would agree with you. He stayed right in the box. It's exactly what you're supposed to do from the right side. That's the second. Hmm. This ball's lifted to right field. Long run for Pearson into the gap and catch made. And that will send us to the stretch. Jones, Neal, and Travinsky do up. LSU leads by one. Take a look at the numbers for LSU in conference play. Two runs fewer in conference play than. Overall, and the pitching with an ERA over seven. They started the year 16 and two. The pitching for both the starters and the pen was magnificent in the non conference. And then things got ratcheted up a notch. Not the least of which was the schedule. Eric Jones leads off the seven. You really start to know your team when you're halfway through the SEC season. Yeah. So you mentioned this kind of in passing that Jay Johnson took away the team's phones when they're at the facility. This ball is lofted foul. One of the things we talked about pregame is when Smoke LaVall was the head coach after he took over for Skip. 
he was upset with the way the team was performing at one point. And I, I don't remember if it was a ping pong table or a card table or whatever it was. It was in the clubhouse at the time. John Zarang, who was a high draft pick of the White Sox, told me this story 20 years ago. And he said, you know, the difference at that time between Skip and Smoke was Smoke got mad at us and he said, you take, we're taking it all out. If you're at the ballpark, you're here to work. You're here to get to the cage and get your swings in or get to the pen and get your work in. You're not here to play cards or ping pong or whatever the, the thing was. And as I was relaying that story to Jay today, the first thing he he motioned with his kind of hands together was well, camaraderie and chemistry, and that takes away from that. I said, yeah, and, and I don't know how taking away a player's phone how that impacts him, right? Because it could you want add to camaraderie ultimately. And and that was the result that he shared with yeah. me. Ground ball to Vastine. He said, you know, um, it had gotten to the point where I, I just had to put the rule in. And I didn't want to, but because of the lack of focus on Monday night and, and the struggles we had, it, it had to be done. He goes, guess what I noticed? He said, not only did we have a really tough competitive practice Tuesday night, but I walked through the clubhouse the other day and guys were talking to each other. And there were no phones to distract them and there were no Twitter checks to see if anybody's talking about you or, you know, other whatever you do with your phone, as we all do. Um, I hate those games where the king is trying to not get flooded in, <laughs> you know, and you got to break the balls in time. That, those are annoying. Here's try to pinch hit. Roy, what's royal something? <laughs> royal ridiculousness. Um, but both the competitive competitiveness that they had in Tuesday night scrimmage, which was competition to see who can get off to a good start and who has the lead after three, and then who can remain their focus and keep the lead through the middle three, and then tie game in the eighth inning, who can finish, and the losing team has to run after each one of those segments. So, man, it was a battle, and we learned that. And, and taking the phones away from them while they're at the ballpark opened up the communication. It makes sense. It, it makes sense. I'm going to take your phone away during the game. No, you I'm going to take it away. Right, two for ten as a pinch hitter. Royal match. Royal match. Uh, so, why is that king so dumb? He I, I always gets this caught is, in this predicament. This, this is like one of the proudest moments in my entire life. It was about five years ago. We were sitting at the breakfast table. My wife came in and said, who spent 20 bucks on Royal Match? Which of you kids <laughs> spent 20 bucks? And all the kids are looking at each other like, I I didn't spend any money on Royal Match. And I got up and kind of took a lap around the kitchen and tried to figure out how I was going to deal with this and just real slowly raised my right hand and didn't say anything. So I didn't have to actually admit to it. I, I just did by mm. raising my hand. That was the last time. I had to get past the board. I was on the plane. What do you want me to do? And? Got past the board. You still play Royal Match? No. <laughs> no. It's kind of like Jay taking the phones away. I took Royal Match away. It's It's been removed. Your discipline is Next respectable. Level. Ethan Fry goes down swinging. We'll take Neal out of the game. By the way, we have a change behind the plate. Next half inning for LSU and Hayden Travinsky coming up. I would bet you get Malazzo behind home plate. You may get Paxton Kling in center field. This is this is when you go defend, defend. Ground ball foul of third. Everyone's uh, focused on the women's final four tonight, the men's final four tomorrow. Did you know that college basketball has manager games and a manager national championship? It's, yeah. Billis used to pump this up. Uh -huh. Yeah. And that trophy is in the SEC now. Congratulations to the Arkansas men's basketball managers, your 24 manager games national champions. The same guy, by the way, who has come up with one of the algorithms that is used by the NCAA for their net rankings came up with the rankings for manager games. <laughs> Strike three called Kevin Palga, who's on Tom Izzo's staff, putting his off time to good use. One, two, three inning work by McIlvain. Here's Alan Espinal leading off the eighth. I think I will go to the spring game. 
A lot of stars who come to Ole Miss football games. I hung out with Chuck Liddell last year at the really? library Friday night before a game. The Iceman. Good guy to keep on the right side. Mm -hmm. Upstairs, ask him. I did ask him, I said, hey, do uh, you ever run into trouble at a bar? You know, like some guy's been overserved and he goes, I'm going to take a swing at Chuck Liddell and take him down. He said, more often than. I'd like to admit he goes but I found there's a really simple way to defuse the situation somebody comes up and they start talking smack and they say man Chuck Liddell I can take you down because I usually just put my arm around him and go man you probably could you do MMA you should who do you train with where do you you'd be really good at and he goes I just compliment him for the next three minutes they end up buying me a beer we both walk off app Espinal looks at a strike full count. Swing and a miss. Ackenhausen with the K. His second. That's Espinal's fifth strikeout of the weekend. Struck out four times yesterday. Ackenhausen has a way of doing this. He can kind of slow the game down in the best possible way for LSU. Back end of the bullpen, two strikeouts already since coming in. Here's Matthew Polk. Uh, by the way, the, the Grove Bowl next week at Ole Miss is not going to be a normal scrimmage. They're going to make it like the Pro Bowl. They'll, they'll play some seven on seven, but then there'll be all sorts of other competitions. There might be a tug of war. Maybe we could, if we. Could get you involved. That one fouled off of Milazzo's leg. How about you think it's you think we can get him to do a dunk tank? <laughs> yeah. Get you in the dunk tank. Yeah. I'll go in the dunk tank. How about pickleball? Lane Kiffin's been playing a lot of really? pickleball lately. Polk is one for three, and he fouls that one right back. A slider hang on to a little bit too long. We talked about it with Ackenhausen when he came in. That's his best pitch. It's his best swing and miss pitch. It's what he throws the most, but that time was held on a little bit too long. Gets Polk on that front spike, and Vandy's got the tie and runner on. So here's Davis Diaz, who is 0 for 2. Drew a walk his last time up. Ackenhausen will throw to first. Polk is four for four on the base pass this season. So leading into uh, next week will be in the Magnolia State for Ole Miss and State for two games in that Ole Miss spring game. Are you uh, going to make a side trip between now and then to see the eclipse? I was not planning. I didn't even know there was going to be an eclipse until you said something last night. Mm -hmm. So no, I'm not going to. One ball, one strike. You're not in the path of totality. Doesn't sound like a path I want to be in. <laughs> Missed arm side with the fastball again. Mm -hmm. 
I believe your path of totality was the walk that you went on when you pushed yourself away from the lunch table at Geno's today on the way to the parking lot. What was on the uh, lunch menu for you? Um, we, we sampled a lot of things today. Three balls and a strike. A buddy Chris Giat met me over there at one. What do we have? We had lamb chops. We had a meatball. We had calamari. We had this bread that would make you give stuff back you didn't take. I don't know what was on it or what was in it, but it was phenomenal. Salad, and then I was asked if I wanted a cannoli to finish everything <laughs> off. I politely declined. Leave the cannolis. Popped up to Milam for out number two. I'm glad you all mixed in a salad. Something to brag about. Jaden Davis coming up. I once I went to Geno's one time uh, with my buddy Ben McDonald and his family. People who and I'm sure you had this experience today. When they sit down and they don't need a menu, they just say we're going to start with this, go with this, bring this over here, this, this, and this. That was today. Yeah. This ball's ridden deep to right field. Pearson back track wall and gone. Two run home run. Jaden Davis Vanderbilt back in front. Josh Pearson simply ran out of Rome. Second home run of the year for Jaden Davis. He hit a ball hard earlier to right field, and this time off the bat, you're thinking maybe the flags are not moving. So this is all provided by Jaden Davis. Pearson thought he had a beat on it all the way back, and about five to ten feet over that right field fence, but enough to carry out of here. Give Vandy the lead back here in the eighth. Four ribbies for Davis tonight. What a game. And we'll get a pinch hitter for Vandy in the spot that Laneve was in after replacing Holcomb. This has been a back and forth affair. It's our buddy Jack Bulger going to get a chance to hit. Bulger's been. Battling some hamstring issues. Senior from Bowie, Maryland. Came up with a pinch hit single last night. And swings at the first here. He told us that he used to go to Bowie Bay Sox games all the time. They live just a couple minutes away from the ballpark. And his parents would take him even though they weren't big baseball fans. And he would show up for batting practice and have a hat for the home team and a hat for the visiting team. <laughs> And he used each hat to chorus players to give him batting practice balls. He said, I still have buckets and buckets of Eastern League balls back home. He never had to buy a ball as a kid. That is a veteran move for an eight, eight year old. Big cut at 91, 1 and 2. Double barrel action, Gavin Gidry and Helmers. Helmers is on the left, and then on the right, that's Justin Moore. No Gidry. 2 and 2. One drifting towards the seats and will be out of play. So two and two. 
in the league tonight. Mississippi State beat Georgia six to one. Kentucky moved to nine and one with a six to two win over Alabama. AM leads South Carolina nine to two. They're in the bottom of the ninth. And Arkansas looking for a series win over Ole Miss up eight three in the eighth. Three and two. Missouri got a walk off win in 11 over Tennessee. Uh, pardon me, over Florida. And Auburn won at home against Tennessee 9 5. Caught the edge. Strike three on Bulger. And that will. Here's Josh Pearson to lead off. AD Davis is taking over in left field for Vandy. Pearson, Braswell, Larson do up in the eighth. Ethan McElvain going to work for Vandy again. First pitch to Austin, and he will win the race to the bag. Makes look pretty easy. Yeah, th there are there are plays over there, and we talked about Austin can play anywhere on the field. That's when you can see why there's an advantage to put him over there at first base because with a left-handed pitcher, McElvain's fallen over towards third base. It's going to be tougher for him to get there. Austin can fly. And McElvain was not going to get there in time. It, it was Austin was the only guy that was going to make that play, and he still got there by a step. Braswell shows bunt, and that one overcooked, one and zero. But people are asking; they want to know: Did you save the king in that royal match when you spent the extra twenty bucks? Yeah, I mean, it was money well spent, if you ask me. But two and zero. Oh. People are asking. <laughs> Two and a half hours of a baseball game, and the most interesting thing I've said is about Royal <laughs> Match. Stay hot. McIlvain out of the Vandy pen is 2 0. This is high, 3 0. LSU led 1 0 in the first inning. Vandy took a 2 to 1 lead. Then LSU was up four to two. Vandy got one in the fourth, one in the fifth. The tied at four. LSU back up with one in the bottom of the fifth. Vandy tied it again in the sixth. LSU took the lead again in the bottom of the sixth. And now here we are with a two-run eighth, putting Vandy on top. Strike called three and two. Just off the plate, and Michael Braswell, the third, picks up a one out walk to reach base for the second time tonight. And Ashton Larson coming up, he is two for three. Up note in the league tonight, AM off to its best SEC start at 7 and 3 since going 8 and 2 and 16. They went 20 and 10 that year. And they got a five game conference win streak going. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Low and away. And the winning pitcher for Auburn today against Tennessee was Carson Myers. His dad, Matt Myers, pitched at Tennessee in the mid 90s. No relation to Michael Myers. Pops out of play. Pitching coach at Lipscomb. The slasher from Halloween? No, no, no. He Different. Should probably no, be in jail. No, no mask or anything. Well, that was Jason. But um, no, I saw him down in Jacksonville. He's in pro ball right now, but hadn't had a chance to watch his son very much. Got to see him at least the first few weeks of the season. Sorry, he's the pitching coach where? He was at Lipscomb. Bisons? Yes. Your lunch date is making some noise.
thought it was interesting Paul Maneri talking about how aggressive he was with hit and run and putting plays on and that in this home environment not only can you take advantage of it but there are times where the visiting team loses its focus when the crowd starts to get into it I, I remember vividly Paul doing that on numerous occasions especially in this ballpark to where he would the minute there was momentum he was putting his foot down on the pedal. And that is a fair ball underhand tosses high and it gets past Davis head of the third is Braswell. He will stop there and the Tigers have runners at first and third with one out in the eighth. The throwing error by McIlvain allows Braswell to advance to third. Larson's just kind of doing everything right today. This is a swinging bunt that's in a spot that, especially with the left hand, the only guy that's got a chance to make this play is Espinal. And instead of going overhand, momentum's taking him. It's almost like a second baseman or a shortstop making a flip on a double play. But RJ Austin can't get to it. Davis was backing it up and it goes over his head. Milam one for two tonight. Swinging away sends a grounder to short. They go to second for one. And on to first for a 6 4 3 double play. Vestein, Davis, and Austin. And Vandy clings to a one run lead after this masterpiece. How about this turn right here? Vestein, he's got to set that right foot to get enough on it. Throw right there, and they finish the double play. LSU is challenging the ruling of out of first base. Has challenged the play at first after the splits and the stretch by Austin. And Jay talking with the bullpen at the same time. That can have some has been, and here's another look. That one's going to stick. After review, the call out is confirmed. Big double play turned by this Vanderbilt team. Their 18th double play of the season. And it's a one run. Austin's been magnificent. Jaden Davis with the go ahead home run in the eighth. Just his second of the year. And Calvin Hewitt fouls this one off. LSU led this game one nothing and then four to two. Hewitt has a couple of hits tonight. He is two for three. Alkenhausen ended this game with one on in the seventh. Got rid of that frame with no issues and then hit Matthew Polk with one out in the eighth, two batters before the Davis home run.
Breaking ball poked the other way and a knock for Calvin Hewitt to start the ninth. Fourth time the leadoff man has reached for Vandy. He has scored two of the previous three. The exception was Hewitt in the seventh. Here's Jonathan Vestine. Shows bunt and takes that one upstairs. Always a threat. He's already stole one tonight. Let's see Bastine square, fake bunt, and turn Hewitt loose right here. See if they keep it on. Ooh, that one was right at the nostrils. He got the bunt down, and the sacrifice is able to advance Hewitt. This just turns into a defensive move right here for Bastine. As he turns that body, it's Boring in on him a great job a to get the bat on it but B to deaden it and get it down the third base line So the only place that Tommy White can go is throw that ball over the first base second time today that Bastines had a sack bunt it looks like that'll do it for Ackenhaus Austin is driven in three also got an RBI with a ground out in the fifth Nothing in one. Fastball for a strike, nothing in two. Yeah, I think you can see Austin right there. You're expecting slider from Helmers and just pumps two fastballs in there at 92 to get into a plus count. Tug that one, one and two. Poked foul. By the way, Clemson got another win today. Second ranked team in the country beat Notre Dame seven to three. But former Clemson pitcher Spencer Strider left the game a little early for Atlanta tonight. Uh -oh. Going to get an MRI on his right elbow tomorrow. Braves won that one late. Here's the one two. Breaking ball in the dirt. Nebraska blanked to Ohio State three nothing. How good are the Huskers of Will Bolt? Huskers are ranked now. Chopped to third. Tommy White fair territory. Dug out well over at first by Jared Jones. That's twice now. Jones has kind of bailed Tommy White out. One was on a high throw and to go up and get. Now this time Jones all the way back. You know you don't have much time. Because Austin can really run. And that's tough for a first baseman because you don't know if you're going to get the hop off the grass or if you're going to get the hop off the dirt. Jones stayed low, went right through it, saved an out right there. Jay Johnson out. They get the lefty 
do up. And two-thirds of an inning against Southern on Monday night. And this one's banged through the right side. It'll bring Hewitt around third. He scores, and Vanderbilt's got a two-run lead in the ninth. I love that Tim Corbin stayed with the freshman right here. Kozel, Kozel, we talked about it, first game of the year, hit third. And he's up there looking for a first pitch breaking ball, something he can handle. Stays on it, rips it to right. Pearson can't charge us to play all the way deep with two outs. Hewitt's going to come around and score easily and extend that Vanderbilt lead. So now Alan Espinal at the plate. Espinal is one for four. Got to the backstop, and that'll allow Kozel to get to second. Tay Johnson out. SEC now. That's coming up next. Schloss has been to Omaha with A&M twice. I think just once. Just once. Swinging a miss, one and two. Only before the season, best team, most talented he's had there by far. Not top third of the lineup. Back him up. Here's the one two. Fly ball, shallow right field, coming over is Pearson. And he handles it for the final out. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Like we don't want either one of those guys to beat us. Well, they, they hit back to back. Now it's white. We want to make sure that it's not that guy that beats us. Bingham is one for eight this weekend. 0 for four tonight. So you get Bingham, you can still go after White. Because ultimately, if he hits it in the seat, you still have a one run lead. Line drive, and he'll be aboard with Tommy White coming to the plate. Tommy White has come to the plate four times tonight, homered in his first two at bats. Was hit by a pitch in his third plate appearance, and he grounded out in the first pitch that he saw in the sixth. They are on their feet at the box. How do you pitch to him? I would be careful with the first pitch. I mean, White's walked more than he struck out this year, but he's not afraid to go after a first pitch if he likes it. He liked it, but he got underneath it. Hewitt in center field. Huge out, one down. Jay Johnson told us last night when he asked for production from guys that he knows they have it in them, he said, I'm not so worried about guys like Tommy White. It's the others in this lineup. Who need to pick it up a little bit and now we'll see if they can after White's out starting with Jared Jones. Nothing in one. Sophomore from Atlanta is driven in a run tonight. And he takes a fastball for strike two. Strike three on the inside corner with 94, two down. I give the freshman left hand a credit right there. I mean, Jones coming up, and he pumped three straight fastballs in there. 
Not exactly where they wanted to go 0-2. He was trying to elevate. But in the end, the miss ends up working pretty well. Three pitch strikeout right there to get Jones. And we'll get another pinch hitter for LSU in this four hole. And the first pitch misses low and in. This is Malazzo who's been in behind the plate in his first plate appearance. One on one. McIlvain has worked three innings in relief. He has struck out three and walked one. Got four ground outs. One and two. Just off the plate. Two balls and two strikes. Austin has come off the bag. He'll play behind Bingham over at first. A little bit more range. Here's the 2 2 to Malazzo. Swing and a miss. Ethan McElvain closes the door. Vandy finds some late offense, including a